Well, well, Gintama has done it again, got up to another banger arc not disappointing me in any way and making me rate it even more highly. The Cortesian of a Nation arc surprised me for what it became over the time of the episodes. It started off with a pretty clear objective in route, but as the episodes went by, we were given new plot points and revelations added into the story of Gintama, which just really surprised me a lot. From hidden pieces of Gintoki's backstory and the rising of the new antagonists, this arc is such a great setup for the next arcs of Gintama, as well as having a nice standalone story within it. So for today's video, I'll be talking about how the Cortesian of a Nation arc changed Gintama for me, and made me love it even more for it to become a top 5 anime for me in the future. Right before we get into the video, subscribe if you haven't, hit that like button, turn on bell notifications, and follow my Twitter down below. So without further ado, let's get into the video. So pretty much the first thing I'm going to cover about this arc is how the plot just developed so much out of nowhere and it didn't even feel messy, it just fit in. First we had a pretty crystal clear storyline with a dying woman from Yoshiwara seeking the man she had made a promise with who was actually one of the shogun's people. Gintoki and the other characters of Gintama head to the location of this mysterious man hoping to get him to go back to the Yoshiwara just before the person he made a promise with dies. The characters eventually go through the normal trials to get to their objective until we are met with Oboro and finding out about the past shogun's connections. The setting erupts from this and the story becomes deepened, coming out with a more political plot. The world of Gintama becomes larger but even with this, we are shown bits and pieces of Gintoki's past life as a child, making Gintama still have that strong self-contained story with the protagonist. It also gets a lot more personal for Gintoki as he finds out that the past shogun was the reason for his sensei getting taken away and also him running into Oboro was something that made him run down memory lane as well. Seeing Gintoki observe his past slowly coming back just hit as I was curious on how Gintoki, well, became Gintoki. Why he was in the war, how he's so skilled with the sword, I was just very curious about the background of his character and seeing it slowly forming a clear picture of what it is surprised me as I never thought I would be seeing these hints coming already but I'm glad I did as it just made the plot even more interesting. Seeing the arc display these two storylines at the same time just made me respect Gintama even more, making this arc only about 5 episodes and feeding us a lot of information within them is just too good. They both had the same instigator being the past shogun who we all know is the worst character of the series. Also I'm glad we finally got a villain we can all hate in the end instead of being sympathetic to them. The past shogun really can't compare to the current shogun who is easily one of the funniest characters of the series but in this arc he just dropped the funny act and went all out. Another thing that I loved about this arc that I kind of said before is how it expanded the world of Gintama. We see new factions rising and antagonists finally starting to make their moves for the future of the story. The arrival of the assassination squad, the Tenshuin, Isaburo probably making plans for a new shogun, and Gintama's plot taking a political change all came out of this one arc, and how it did just felt great. I feel a lot of things are probably going to be coming out from this arc, especially the problems that will arise from the choices that were made. One of the problems would obviously be Takasugi's plan setting in stone really soon. At the end of the thorny arc, we had seen Isaburo and Takasugi having a conversation and it looked like they were both kind of working together. This arc confirms this with us seeing the conversation between Nobume and Oboro as Nobume says that she will work alongside Isaburo even though he's working with a student of Shoyo, Takasugi. Takasugi's plan that he's making seems pretty big if he has to work with somebody like Isaburo and I'm surprised Isaburo is allied with the I simply destroy everything guy. After this arc, it's now clear what the two sides are in the upcoming battle. The higher up Amantos that Oboro works for and Takasugi's side. I'm curious to see where Gintoki and the rest of the odd jobs are going to fit in this political war because of course, this is Gintoki's story. Talking about Gintoki's story, I'm gonna try to work out Gintoki's backstory from the things that I've gathered so far. 
So in this arc, Obero had brought up an event called the Kensei Purge. We found out more about this purge with it being the period of time when the past Shogun had cleaned out places of possible growing rebels. One of the places was the School of Shoyu, the place where a young Gintoki was in with Katsura and Takasugi. I presume they were the main people there. During the purge, Shoyu got taken away by the assassin group that Obero works for and I think Gintoki was left behind. I don't know if the group tried to kill the students of the school since they might have been possible rebels. Later in Gintoki's younger days, he went into the war with the Amantu. I don't know if Shoyu Sensei was alive at that time as he was taken away years back, but we saw a decapitated head of his behind a more older Gintoki, Katsura and Takasugi, with them wearing the uniforms when they were at war. It might be possible that he was alive until the war as the high ops could have tried to gain information on him and this could have been the reason why the three students of Shoyo went to war. It seems that Gintoki had led a very sad life and seeing how he came from that life to the current world of Gintamo is just amazing. This arc was just such a great experience to watch. The feelings were everywhere in this one just like the Four Davis arc. Also, probably one of the most hypest fights in the series, Gintoki vs Obero was great. Seeing Gintoki run up in rage again and full on biting Obero's sword surprised me, but it's just to be expected from the white demon. All of the fights in this arc were pretty good to be honest. I also loved how the police forces came together to take down the past shogun. It was pretty unexpected to see Izabaru's group had teamed up with Kondo's, but seeing this temporary team up was satisfying. I also really loved the current shogun's moment. I already love his character in the comedy episodes but seeing this made me like him even more. I've heard Gintama can get even better than this so I can't wait to find out. Now that's where I'm gonna end it off for today, hopefully you did enjoy it and if you did, make sure to comment down below some more video ideas that I could talk about. But for now, like always, subscribe if you haven't, hit the like button, turn on bell notifications and follow my twitter down below. It's been Endless Requiem, peace.